Hello and welcome back to Animal Wonders. I'm Jessie and this is Ringo the raccoon. Raccoons are one of my favorite animals because there's just something irresistible about their cute little faces. Oh, their features too. <laughs> but you know, they're totally mischievous little rascals. Raccoons may be cute and I know a lot of people who secretly wished they had one as a pet. But before you try to make that dream a reality, there's another side to raccoons that isn't talked about enough. And that's just how dangerous they are. I'm not talking about their sharp teeth and claws and their willingness to use them to get their way. I'm talking about the unseen things like parasites, bacteria, and viruses that raccoons can and will spread to humans and our pets. Ringo was an orphaned raccoon and raised by humans. And as he neared the age where he would be able to survive on his own in the wild, he was deemed non-releasable due to his fondness for human interaction. Basically, if he were to be released into the wild, he would likely seek out humans for food and company, which would lead to him becoming a nuisance. And nuisance wildlife, especially raccoons, are often euthanized by local authorities. So Ringo is a permanent resident at Animal Wonders, living out his life as an ambassador for his species, where he never has to worry about predators or if he'll have another meal. The hardest parts of his life are figuring out how to get treats out of puzzle feeders and which blanket he's going to pad his cozy home with. But when Ringo first arrived at Animal Wonders, we didn't rush to start hands-on interaction with him. That's because we know all too well just how many germs and little critters can live in and on raccoons. I didn't want to get sick and I didn't want my kids, staff, or other animals getting sick. So Ringo went straight into quarantine. During quarantine time, he received a thorough exam, testing, treatment, and follow-ups to ensure he was safe to be handled by all of our staff and also enjoy getting out on walks in the forest. He finally passed his quarantine exit exam and, hi buddies, <laughs> we're all really happy that we didn't have to worry all about the gross things raccoons can carry and we can just focus on how cute and mischievous this little guy is. And now that he's been extra adorable, I'm going to present you a partial list of gross things raccoons can carry and spread to humans and or commonly kept pets like dogs and cats. Raccoon roundworm, canine distemper, leptospirosis, parvovirus, mange, fleas, and rabies. Now, we're not just listing them off. We're going to talk about how gross they are. Let's start with one of the grossest things that raccoons can carry, and what I call a big nasty. Raccoon roundworms. They kind of look like noodles. Raccoon roundworms should not be put in the same category as other roundworms because raccoon roundworms are way worse for humans. It's all about their life cycle, which is built around raccoons. The adults live in their small intestine and the eggs are shed in the raccoon's feces. Two to four weeks later, the eggs have developed to become infectious. They're very small and stick to fur and other objects, making them easy to accidentally ingest and infect another animal. The raccoon roundworm often doesn't cause life-threatening issues for raccoons, but it can cause serious issues for other species like humans. If eaten, the eggs hatch in the animal's gut, and instead of staying and growing to adults in the gut like they do in raccoons, the larvae penetrate the intestinal walls and make their way into other organs like the brain, eyes, and liver. This makes the animal unable to function properly, which makes them easier prey for the raccoon. And if the raccoon eats the infected animal, the roundworms return to their host and continue with their life cycle. Interestingly, dogs can carry raccoon roundworms similar to how raccoons do, which means means it's not as scary for the dog's well-being, but that also means the dog then becomes a spreader. If humans ingest the eggs, the larvae hatch and travel into our brain, causing serious neurological impairments, including loss of coordination, seizures, coma, and death. Or they can travel into your eyes, causing vision impairment and blindness. Raccoon roundworm in humans is most often seen in small children who play in the soil outside, or those with close contact with raccoon feces, like if they're living in your attic. Unfortunately, there's no known test to see if you've been infected. So if you think you or someone you know has been exposed 
the best thing to do is to contact your doctor. The only cure is to catch it with deworming medication before the larva hatch, since there's no treatment once they've migrated out of the GI tract. Fortunately, the roundworm can be treated in dogs and raccoons using an oral deworming medication and a strict sanitizing regimen. The problem is that the eggs can only be killed by extreme heat, so boiled water or fire. To sanitize, you need to use bleach to break the sticking power of the eggs and then bag everything you can't burn or boil because the eggs can stay infectious for years. I think raccoon roundworms are the one that makes me cringe the most, but we've barely scratched the surface. Next up, is canine distemper. This is a virus that attacks the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and nervous system in dogs and other mammal species, including raccoons. Canine distemper is in the same group as human measles and mumps and is highly contagious. It's spread through aerosol droplets and contact with infected body fluids like saliva and nasal discharge. For example, sneezing, communal grooming or playing with toys, and eating or drinking from contaminated sources. There is no cure for the distemper virus, and the mortality rate is seriously high in young animals who haven't developed a strong immune system yet. Treatment relies on supporting the patient's main systems while their immune system fights the virus. Thankfully, distemper isn't a major issue for humans, and it's thought that if you've been vaccinated against measles and mumps, then you're immune to distemper as well. Raccoons, however, can spread distemper to domestic dogs through their body fluids, like if they drink out of the dog's water dish that's been left outside. And as a last note, raccoons are also susceptible to feline distemper virus. It's not as common, but just as deadly to raccoons, and an infected raccoon can spread the virus to our domestic cats. So, are you starting to look at raccoons differently yet? because we still have more diseases to go. Next up is leptospirosis. This is a bacterial infection caused by the bacteria Leptospira and spread through the urine of infected animals. Many mammal species can be carriers, including, but not limited to, cats, dogs, cows, horses, rodents, and raccoons. The bacteria can live in water or damp soil, and it infects the host if it's ingested or exposed to broken skin or mucous membranes, like your eyes, nose, or mouth. Leptospirosis is the disease caused by the bacteria, and the symptoms include fever, headache, bleeding, muscle pain, chills, red eyes, and vomiting. Luckily, there are antibacterial medications to treat the infection, but it is serious and the patient does need to be seen by a medical professional. If left untreated, the infection can lead to kidney or liver damage and even death. Our next gross thing raccoons can carry is another virus called parvovirus. This virus has a dozen different strains that are species specific, including canine, feline, and raccoon. But raccoons break the species specific rule and can carry and spread canine, feline, and raccoon varieties, though they only become clinically ill with raccoon and feline parvoviruses. Parvo causes lethargy, fever, vomiting, diarrhea, and loss of appetite, which leads to dehydration, damage to the intestines and immune system and even death. There is no cure for parvo and it has a 91% mortality rate without supportive care. But with supportive care, the chances of survival are good at about 70 to 90%. Thankfully, humans can't get parvovirus from a different species, but the disease is serious for our pets and the virus can stay infectious in soil for several months or years if it's not exposed to extreme temperatures or direct sunlight. Parvo is spread through contact with feces or body fluids of a sick animal and can be easily spread on clothing and shoes. Removing or killing the virus is difficult, so the best way to keep pets safe is to avoid an infection by getting your pets vaccinated and keeping them up to date on their boosters. We're speeding through them now. Are you ready for another parasite? This one is called mange. Mange is a skin disease caused by mites that live on the host. There are many species of mites, but sarcoptic mange is the main one that affects mammals, including humans, dogs, cats, and raccoons. Raccoons can also spread demodectic mange to dogs. The mites can often be transmitted to a new animal by direct contact or by sharing spaces like a sleeping den or blankets. The mites can also fall off the host and stay alive and infectious for several weeks. Infected animals that don't get treatment will often become very thin and weak. This is happening because the food that they're eating isn't nourishing their own bodies. Instead, it's being used up by the parasites. Luckily, mange is treatable by proper oral or injection medications and cleaning of the environment. Now, I gotta mention the very well-known parasite that raccoons can carry and spread. 
please. These little buggers are a small insect and they're notoriously a nuisance for mammal and bird species. There are over 2,500 species of fleas and some are species specific while others don't mind a variety of hosts. The most prevalent flea that raccoons can get and spread is the cat flea. Fleas can cause skin irritations, which can lead to hair loss and wounds caused by persistent scratching. Anemia can occur in very extreme cases where the host can't support their own health due to an overabundance of the parasites. The flea life cycle isn't contained to living on the host, which makes it easier for the insect to spread to other hosts. Raccoons can pick up fleas from other raccoons, other wildlife, or even dogs and cats. They can then carry the fleas and spread them throughout their natural range. And while fleas are a nuisance, thankfully infestations can be treated and or prevented by topical and oral medications, topical soaps, and ensuring the animal's environment is properly cleaned. And we're going to end with a big one. Rabies. Rabies is a virus that has gotten a lot of attention and a lot of people already know about it, which is great because it's pretty serious. The rabies virus can be carried and spread by most mammals and there is no cure. So if an animal is infected with the virus in the wild, they don't survive. It's transmitted from an infected animal through body fluids and into an orifice of the healthy animal. Often saliva from the infected animal goes into a bite wound. The infection travels to the brain and spinal cord and once the virus reaches the brain, they start exhibiting symptoms and they die shortly after. The symptoms include fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, agitation, anxiety, confusion, hyperactivity, difficulty swallowing, excessive salivation, hallucinations, insomnia, and partial paralysis. Now, the good news is that we thankfully have a tool that we can use against rabies an injectable vaccine, which has been tested and proven to protect humans, dogs, cats, and ferrets. The vaccine is best used as a preventative measure, but can also be given post exposure since the rabies virus has an incubation period of about 14 days before reaching the brain. If you want to learn more about my experience with rabies, I made a video about it a few years ago. I put a link in the description. So rabies is a scary and serious virus, and I'm really happy that most people are educated about it and the vaccine is easily accessible so we can keep our loved ones safe. Well, after all this talk about viruses, bacteria, and parasites, who wants to cuddle a raccoon? But in all seriousness, now that you know just how gross raccoons can be, the next time you watch an adorable video of someone interacting with a wild raccoon, we can all collectively shiver thinking of all the infectious diseases that can be spread by those oh so soft and curious hands of theirs. Raccoons are very handsy animals, meaning they love to touch everything with their hands. And even though they like to wash their hands in water, since they don't use soap to disinfect, you can be sure they're spreading those germs on everything they touch. So the most important thing that you can do to prevent these diseases from infecting your loved ones is to avoid feeding wild raccoons. Feeding raccoons can happen accidentally by leaving pet food outside or having unsecured waste bins, or it can happen on purpose because you think raccoons are cute. The problem is once raccoons find a source of food, they often return. So be sure you feed pets inside, bring pets inside at night, and keep your trash cans covered with raccoon proof lids. That way you're not endangering yourself, your neighbors, or any kids and pets that live in your neighborhood. And the most important thing that you can do if you live in an area where you cohabitate with raccoons is to practice excellent hand washing skills because soap and hot water is amazing at preventing infectious viruses, bacteria, and parasites from making us sick. And if you think your pet has been exposed to a raccoon or one of these diseases, contact your veterinarian for guidance on what to do next. And if you've been exposed to a wild raccoon and are concerned about the transmission of a disease, please contact your doctor for advice. We owe a big thank you to Ringo for being our co-host. He is such a handsome raccoon. Oh, and if you're wondering, he's been vaccinated against rabies, distemper, and parvo. He's also been treated for mites and fleas, and he's gone through several rounds of dewormer. I'm really glad we were able to treat him so he's healthy and can't spread any of those gross diseases to anyone else. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you'd like to go on more animal adventures with us, be sure to subscribe. Bye.